Hey, Gulf Coast, welcome to the Gulf Coast Awakening. We are having an amazing time in El Camino Bay preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says two times John the Baptist said that Jesus Christ was the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire, and the fire of God has fallen there at El Camino Bay with this event that we've organized for the Gulf Coast called the Gulf, I mean, called Freedom Fest Gulf Coast through the Gulf Coast Awakening. Let me quickly share this scripture with you. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse number seven said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Let's go straight into this week's meeting because we believe that the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the words that Jesus gave us are as true then as they are today. You can now go to Tampa, Florida or online. And Pastor Rodney did a sermon series. And I'm on the front cover of, of that thing with a bunch of outreaches that we had going on called Demonstrations of the Spirit and Power. Do you know what it's going to take to shake communities in America? Do you know what it's going to take to turn communities upside down? It's going to take people like in the book of Acts that were filled with the Holy Ghost and power, glory to God. People like Stephen, glory to God. People like Philip, glory to God. People like Peter, glory to God. People like Paul, glory to God. People in the book of Acts were filled with the Holy Ghost and power. They demonstrated it's one thing for you to just preach, but it's another thing when you can demonstrate. You know what I told him, Ken? I told a man downstairs two weeks ago. I told a man downstairs, huh, he's taking pictures right there beside you. Hallelujah. I didn't know he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. And I was talking to four other men. I said, lean up against that car and lift your hands. And when I lay my hands on you, you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. As soon as I laid hands on him, he went, immediately got filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, last Sunday, last Sunday, Sunday night, the police officer came two hours from Evergreen, Alabama. He'd been following me on social media. The police officer came all the way from Evergreen, Alabama, two-hour drive to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And y'all saw, as soon as I laid my hands on me, demonstration of the Spirit and power, as soon as I touched him right there, the power of God came on him, and he started speaking in tongues. Glory to God. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost. You saw a demonstrations of the spirit and power or you heard when Brother Kelly, the woman that was completely demonized, he said, in the name of Jesus, stop. And the woman just stopped dead in her tracks and got up and got out of there. Amen. Somebody say demonstrations of spirit demonstrations. and power. Amen. Say, I am called I am to walk in, walk in. Demonstrations, demonstrations of the spirit, of the spirit. and power. I'm not just called to preach. I'm called to demonstrate. Give the Lord some praise if you believe it in the house. Now I'm going somewhere. Get ready. Oh, this fish in the rabu. Shanda rabakasa. This finna get good now. CTN. I feel the zap coming on tonight. Demonstrations of the Spirit and power. Ginger's uh, three, 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 two Sunday, three Sundays ago. Ginger's uh, son came. Hallelujah! Maybe y'all was here on that Sunday, and I called him out of his seat. Hallelujah! And Chris said, "That's that's Zach. That's Ginger's Ginger's son." I said, "He gonna get zapped tonight." That's what I said, didn't I? And y'all saw the young man, get me, I called him out of his seat. And the young man came right there and lifted his hands. And as soon as he lifted his hands, he began shaking and trembling like this. And when I laid my hands on him, zap hit him. You ain't going to get away from that zap. No, I don't care how far you run. That zap going to pull you right back to where you need to be. I got Jesus on the main line. Yeah, 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 I got Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Come on, I want the Holy Ghost. I want everything that God's got to offer me. I want demonstrations of the Spirit and power. You think they don't need it in the inner city? 
what they do is they need somebody to show up with demonstrations of the spirit and power. They turned the whole school over to me one time. Hallelujah. I let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost does. Got 400 kids lined up receiving Jesus. And I released the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the public school system during school hours. Children started speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Middle school and a demon starts screaming out of a girl. Teachers weeping and crying. Kids reaping and crying. I got a teacher on film going, this is what we need. This is what we need. You see, you see what the answer is, is Jesus. The answer is the power of the Holy Ghost. They keep denying it. I went to a local public school system. And I offered them the, what do you call it? What's the high per person? The superintendent. I offered them $1 million of college scholarships. But do you know that because it was a, to a Bible college, they wasn't willing to accept it? How dumb can you be and still breathe? <laughs> Knowing that's what the children really need. It's in an accredited Bible college. Okay, let's find a way to get it in here. Come on, somebody. To H214, page number, no, chapter, go down to where it says number six, seven years of oppression. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midian for, Midianites for seven years. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on in America today is because of a sleepy, lethargic church. A Laodicean church. Ask yourself question. What is my fellowship of believers doing to change the world around us? The church has been asleep for far too long. The church has allowed, uh, allowed uh, uh, things to be swept under the carpet. No, let's don't talk about that from the pulpit. Let's don't talk about that abortion is murder. And every time you vote for a political candidate that's uh, supporting murder, you're voting for all of those spirits to come to your house and get in your neighborhood. Let's don't talk about that, that, that uh, homosexuality is an abomination to God. It's in the Bible. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And when you vote for people that stand on the side of abomination, you get abomination. That's right, man. Well, I could go somewhere with that abomination, couldn't I? Some of y'all got it. <laughs> yeah, let's leave that alone, brother. The hand of Midian prevailed against the children of Israel because the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Do you remember what the Philistines said to Jonathan and his armor bearer? When Jonathan and his armor bearer went and discovered themselves to the Philistine garrison, which, by the way, a Philistine garrison was not 20 people. It would be like me and Brother David saying, we're going down here to Tyndall Air Force Base, and we're going to take Tyndall Air Force Base. It would be like me and Liz and George saying, we're going to go over to Pensacola, amen, and we're going to take, we're going to take Pensacola Naval Air Station for Jesus. A whole entire military garrison. Two people say, we're going to go pick a fight with the military garrison because it represented the enemy. The enemy's not people, ladies and gentlemen. The enemy is principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, devils and demons. Where are the people that's willing to go confront some stuff like that? When they showed themselves, Jonathan and armor bearer said, watch this. They've come out of the holes in the grounds where they have hid themselves. The enemy in America sees the church as way weak, hiding themselves and powerless. Daniel McGee's coming. Hallelujah. For time's sake, let's speed on up. Hallelujah. Verse number 11. 
there came an angel of the Lord that sat under an oak tree, which was Oprah, and pertained to Joash the Abzerite. And the son of Gideon, he was threshing wheat by the wine press to hid from the Midianites because why he was over there, he was also afraid. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how you feel like. And I really don't care how you acting like right now. But God's got a plan. And God says something different about you. He says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. They got your head in the sand that you trying to hide over here because you afraid of everybody else. God don't see you that way. He sees you as a demonstrator of spirit and power. The Bible says this, and Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, hallelujah. Why then is all of this befallen on us? Hallelujah. And where and where be all the miracles which our fathers told us, saying, did, uh, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. I am so perplexed that the church is confused about what's going on. We went to the streets. We go into the streets. And as many of you guys know, my the first, I uh, was uh, one night I had a, reaching over 18,000 people, 8,000 people, 9,000 people on my social media. I cannot tell you how many church Christian people came against me because I was preaching the gospel in the streets. God didn't give Daniel McGee a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. He told me to go preach the gospel with demonstrations of the spirit and power. Then they shut me down on social media. For time's sake, let's speed up right here. The Bible goes on to say this. Watch this, because I'm getting somewhere tonight. Oh, shandarabaki, sataraba. Go to the next page. Chapter 7 at the bottom. What does it say right there in your Bible, the heading of chapter number 7? Gideon's army is too big. Oh, my God. So you're going to go against the Midianite army. Which the Bible says were as numerous as the sands on the seashore. And all you got is about 30,000 people willing to go with you. But over there is 2, 3 million people. But you just obeying God because God said you a mighty man of valor. You think that you're going to take this 30,000, 33,000 people and go against the millions. The, the Midianites were as the sands on the seashore. They had so many people. There's no constraint for the Lord to save by many and save by few. God's not looking for the masses. He's looking for the, uh, the anointed that he can send. The good will keep you from the great. A lot of good ministries in America. But I promise you this, according to the book of Acts, they ain't great. Ain't nobody getting devils cast out. Ain't nobody getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Ain't nobody getting delivered. Ain't nobody getting healed. And ain't nobody getting mobilized to go and do. Watch this now. Then Jerubbabel, who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early, and they pitched beside the, uh, the well of El Herod, so that the host of Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, watch this now, the people that are with you, they too many. What do you mean, God, too many? We got like 33,000 over here. They got like two, three million over there. And the people that were with him, they said, this is what God said. The people that are with you, they too many. For me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel would vaunt themselves against me, saying, my hand, mine own hand have saved me. Now, therefore, go proclaim. Proclaim this in the ears of the people, saying this. Whoever's a chicken. That's Daniel McGee's vernacular from the south. The Bible says this. He says, now therefore go proclaim in the ears of the people saying, 
Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early to Mount Gilead. And the Bible said, and there returned of the people 22,000 people left. And now there remains only 10,000. Well, maybe God going to do something. Now we got 10,000 people. Hallelujah, Liz. No constraint for the Lord to save by many or save by few. Just need to be some people that are full of the demonstrations, uh, demonstrations of the Spirit and power. That's all it takes. Now there's only 10,000 of us. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people are yet too many. Oh, my God. What you mean, God? They still with 3 million people over there. We got 10,000 people. Now you telling me they still too many. Yep, they too many. Watch what the Bible says because we're going somewhere with this one. We're almost there. The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water and I will try them there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee and the same shall go with thee. For And whosoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the, where did he take them to? I'm finna take you to the water here in just a minute. I'm finna take you to the water. I'm finna take you to the whale here in just a minute. <laughs> For what you did, Lord, in the day of Gideon, may you do it again in our day. He brought them down to people. He brought them down to the water. But the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him thou shalt set uh, by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knee uh, uh, needs to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But the rest of them bowed down on their knees to drink water. Now, I want you to understand something. I'm going to give you two analogies here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll give you two pictures here. Glory to God. So here's what happens. 10,000 people go down to the water. 10,000 people has already been cut down from 20 or 32,000 because he said all the afraid people need to go. Hallelujah. I can't tell you how many people we invited down here tonight. Hallelujah. But I know that everybody didn't show up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm here to make a stand because I ain't afraid. Amen. Pastor Rodney said, well, they, they, they said you, they, they thought thousands of people were going to show up. He said, I'm here to make a stand for America. I'm here to make a stand like my pastor's making a stand. They go down to the water. Now there's only 10,000 people left. Yet the Midianite army is over there. And the Midianite army's got more than the sands of the sea. A couple million suckers over there. They just suckers for they finna get taken by God. They go down, and he said, everybody that drink like this, leak the water like this, you got to go. <laughs> but he said this. He said, everybody that drink the water like this, you get to stay. Their eyes wasn't down. Their eyes was up. They were alert. Watch this now. They knew how to drink properly. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2 now. Which happens to be on page, glory to God, hallelujah, Jesus. 846, if you in the Bible tonight, 846 is on page number 846. Chapter number 2. The Bible says this. And when the day, my God, I just bought a baptize my Bible, hit myself on the leg. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost was fully come. 
They were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and there appeared to them, unto them, cloven tongues like as a fire, glory to God. And it set upon each of them. I'm here to tell you tonight that there's a fire for everybody in this place and everybody watching by the way of Christian Television Network on a Sunday evening. You living in Mobile, Alabama, Loosedale, Mississippi. You living in Pensacola, Florida, Fort Walton Beach, Baldwin County, and you watching this, come on down here to El Camino Bay because we're here every Sunday afternoon. There's a fire for you. The Bible goes on to say this. Oh, let me show you what happened when they got the fire. Because people that say they got the fire, I'm going to tell you this, they're going to be some evidence of people that got the fire. The Bible says, and, they, uh, and there appeared to them cloven tongues like a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you're going to see communities shaken and turned upside down, you're going to need the same prescription that they had in the book of Acts, Holy Ghost and fire. And when you get the Rebo Shandara, when you get the Holy Ghost and fire, you'll know it. The cameraman back there clipping, he's saying, boy, the cameraman is sighted. When you get the Holy Ghost and fire, you ain't got to tell you to get out in the community. You'll just go do it for free. The world will know when you got the Holy Ghost and fire. You'll know when you got the Holy Ghost and fire. And watch this. The devil will know it too. Somebody say the Holy Ghost and fire. You got to know how to drink properly. What does it mean to know how to drink properly? Lord, baptize me in the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. I want to drink properly. I don't want to be the fearful group. I don't want to be the group that don't know how to pay attention. When you got the Holy Ghost, he'll tell you what's going on. Listen, this, this, this. This how I know Linda. That a whole bunch of them ain't listening to the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost, there ain't no division. In the Holy Ghost, there ain't no, there is no racism. In the Holy Ghost, there is no confusion. In the Holy Ghost, it's called a family, a body. It's called the saints, the believers, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are red. We are yellow. We are black. We are white. We are all precious in his sight. I don't need somebody to tell me to go talk to somebody that don't look like me. Because when I look at somebody, the Bible says that God created man in the likeness of his image. And when I look at somebody, I'm looking at God. You deal with racism, I can cast that devil out of you too. Somebody say, Holy Ghost and fire. Somebody say, I want to drink properly. I want to be in the battle. Like Gideon's army was in the battle. Now watch this now. Imagine, pastor, what Gideon's army got to see. As you read the rest of it for yourself, it looked like it was impossible it looked like it was insurmountable it looked like there was no way that it could happen but the ones that knew how to drink properly also knew how to obey properly Amen. Amen. you ain't got to tell me lay my hands on nobody ain't no government can tell me not to lay my hands on somebody I know the supreme ruler of the universe himself. I know the king of glory himself. I know the one that every government leader is going to bow down to and confess that he is savior and he is Lord. And he's the one that told me, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tell me don't go to the streets. Really? When I got somebody that already told me to go to the streets. 
when I have a marching order from heaven and I am, hallelujah, drinking properly. I'm not drinking what the world's pumping. I'm not drinking what CNN's pumping. I'm not drinking what MSNBC's pumping. I'm not drinking what even Fox News is pumping. I ain't drinking what none of them are pumping. I'm drinking with pure octane Holy Ghost fire. Amen. Camera person, thank you. They be like, excited. Hallelujah, I like that. Oh, Rabbi Sata. Come on with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, and this is where we're going to end tonight. Acts chapter 8. Oh, my God, he's going to lay hands on people. Really? It's in the Bible. Either you want it or you don't. Either I want demonstration of the spirit and power, I want to go to another level, or I don't. I'm prophesying to you, watching by the way of Christian Television Network. You don't even need me to lay hands on you. You sitting on your couch on a Sunday night. All you need to do is get out of, lift your hands, and receive the power of the Holy Ghost when I pray tonight. You got to get out of that denominational church. If them Baptist people holding you back from the power, get out. If the Methodists is holding you back from the power, get out. And if you go into a church where they ordain and homosexuals, you better run for your life. You ever seen uh, Shane? You know, you know some denominations see me preaching like this, but they swear I'm going to hell. Especially if I got a wedding ring on to my finger. I'm just telling you some funny stuff. Anybody ever seen the KKK dressed up in their garb? Anybody ever seen that? Oh, hooded monsters, Pastor Rodney calls them. Hooded monsters dressed up in their garb. Anybody ever seen them bishops and popes dressed up in their garb? Anybody ever seen those groups of people? They speak in tongues, but they got big hats on, dressed up in the same garb. The spirit of religion has different degrees, and it takes a discerning drinker to know it. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. What is of the old covenant needs to stay in the old covenant. What you and I need is the, to be enclosed or cloaked with the power of the Holy Ghost and fire. As you guys can see here on the Gulf Coast with the Gulf Coast Awakening and this event that we've organized at El Camino Bay Restaurant called Freedom Fest Gulf Coast that's going all the way through July and August, we are having some fun with Jesus and the Holy Ghost. The Word of God is being preached demonstrations of the spirit and power we are stirring the church up for revival it's amazing that people are catching the fire and i'm getting phone calls and getting reports of souls being saved and people praying for the sick so we want you to come on out and be a part of what god is doing next week's going to be part number three you're going to hear some amazing stories uh what god's doing through the ministry and has done through the teens across the nation uh, right here on the Gulf Coast Awakening. And now I want you to stay tuned once again this week. Let's go to my pastor, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown with the National Great Awakening.